All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning, I'm Sunil Verma and with me is Sarbjeet Kaur. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address Investors Summit in Gujarat at 11 this morning. India achieves installed renewable energy capacity of 100 gigawatts. Government asks its officers to switch over to prepaid smart meters. Niti Aayog issues guidelines for state governments and local bodies to frame policies for setting up charging networks for electric vehicles. More than 52 crore 89 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far. India asks its nationals to leave Afghanistan by commercial flights. Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur launches nationwide Fit India Freedom Runs 2.0. India sends largest ever contingent for Tokyo Paralympic Games and in cricket, KL Rahul's unbeaten century and Rohit Sharma's gutsy 83 help India take up a hand against England in second test in London. As the nationwide free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is going on. We advise our young listeners to get vaccinated and also help others get vaccinated. We also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask. Maintain Dogas Ki Duri for social distancing. Focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address Investor Summit at Gandhinagar in Gujarat at 11 a.m. today via video conferencing. The summit is being organized to invite investment for setting up vehicle scrapping infrastructure under the Voluntary Vehicle Fleet Modernization Program or the Vehicle Scrapping Policy. It will also draw focus on the synergies presented by the shipbreaking industry at Alang for development of an integrated scrapping hub. Union Minister for Road Transport and Highways Nitin Gadkari and Chief Minister of Gujarat Vijay Rupani will also be present on the occasion. More from our Ahmedabad correspondent. The Investors Summit is being jointly organized by the Union Ministry of Road Transport and Highways and Gujarat Government. It will witness the participation from potential investors, industry experts and concerned central and state government ministers and officials. The summit will focus on the vehicle scrapping policy. It is aimed at creating an ecosystem for phasing out unfit and polluting vehicles in the environment-friendly and safe manner. The policy intends to create scrapping infrastructure in the form of automated testing stations and registered vehicle scrapping facilities across the country. Yogesh Pandya, AIS News, Ahmedabad. The government has said that the total installed renewable energy capacity in India has crossed the milestone of 100 gigawatts. Today, India stands at the fourth position in the world in terms of installed renewable energy capacity, fifth in solar and fourth in wind in terms of installed capacity. In a tweet, Power and New and Renewable Energy Minister R.K. Singh said, Today is another landmark day in the history of the Indian power sector. He said, under the visionary leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, India will continue to be a global leader in energy transition. He said, the achievement of installed renewable energy capacity of 100 gigawatts is an important milestone in India's journey towards its target of 450 gigawatts by 2030. The Power Ministry Ministry said, 100 gigawatts has been installed, 50 gigawatts is under installation and 27 gigawatt is under tendering. It said, if large hydro is included, the installed renewable energy capacity will increase to 146 gigawatt. Ministry of Power has issued an advisory to all central ministries of the government to direct organizations under their administrative control to ensure switchover to prepaid smart meters on priority. As part of the same process, the ministries have also been asked to issue all enabling orders in this regard. 
This follows a clarification issued by Finance Ministry enabling all central ministries and central departments to make advance payments for prepaid metered electricity without insisting on any bank guarantees while at the same time ensuring proper accounting arrangements. Prepaid smart metering in all government departments would go a long way in ensuring the commitment of the government in bringing discoms back on the path of financial sustainability and promotion of energy efficiency. It would also serve as a model for emulation by states for defining similar such mechanisms that support prepayment of the electricity dues by their own departments. Niti Aayog has released a handbook to guide state governments and local bodies to frame policies and norms towards setting up charging networks for electric vehicles. The objective is to enhance charging infrastructure and facilitate a rapid transition to electric mobility in the country. The handbook for electric vehicle charging infrastructure implementation has been jointly developed by Niti Aayog, Ministry of Power, Department of Science and Technology, Bureau of Energy Efficiency and World Resources Institute, India. The handbook provides a systematic and a holistic approach for adoptions by implementing authorities and other stakeholders involved in planning, authorization and execution of electric vehicles charging infrastructure. Niti Aayog Vice Chairman Dr. Rajiv Kumar said the transition to electric mobility is a global strategy in the fight against climate change. He said the handbook addresses the common challenges being faced by different local authorities in implementing electric vehicles charging networks. Dr. Kumar said it serves as a starting point for the peer-to-peer -peer exchange of best practices between states and local bodies. Niti Aayog CEO Amitabh Khan said the electric vehicles ecosystem in India is evolving rapidly and there are several players entering the charging infrastructure market. India's cumulative COVID vaccination coverage has exceeded 52 crore 89 lakh mark. Union Health Ministry said that more than 41 crore vaccine doses were administered as first dose and over 11 crore vaccine doses given a second dose so far. The new phase of universalization of COVID-19 vaccination commenced from 21st of June this year. The ministry said more than 50 lakh vaccine doses were administered yesterday. Over 27 lakh vaccine doses were administered as first dose and more than 4 lakh vaccine doses given a second dose in the age group 18 to 44 years yesterday. Cumulatively, 18 crore 76 lakh persons in the age group 18 to 44 years across 37 states and union territories have received their first dose since the start of Phase 3 of the vaccination drive. A total of 49 new cases of coronavirus infection were reported in the national capital yesterday. The Delhi government said 41 people recovered from the infection in the last 24 hours and no death was reported in the city. Presently, the total number of active cases of COVID-19 in the national capital is 502. More than 1,15,000 beneficiaries were inoculated for COVID-19 in the last 24 hours in Delhi. With this, over 1 crore 10 lakh beneficiaries have been vaccinated so far. In Jammu and Kashmir, one terrorist was killed in an encounter with security forces this morning. The encounter broke out yesterday after terrorists fired on a BSF convoy on Srinagar Jammu National Highway near Malpura Mir Bazar area of Kulgam district. The operation was halted last night due to darkness. Security forces resumed the operation this morning and one terrorist was killed. The encounter continues when reports last came in. In Uttar Pradesh, 23 districts are affected from flood, but the situation is more grim in districts like Priyagraj, Varanasi, Badohi, Ghazipur and Balia. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath yesterday visited Varanasi district, which is affected from flood because of the rise in water level of Ganga and Varuna rivers. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also took stock of the flood situation in his parliamentary constituency two days back. More details from our Lucknow correspondent. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath surveyed the flood affected areas in Varanasi and took a boat ride from Rajghat to Puranapul area to assess the situation. Chief Minister also visited the relief camps set up by the administration. He said that there was no dearth of funds for giving relief to flood affected people and told officials that assistance must reach them in time. Chief Minister reviewed the flood situation in Bhadohi, Mirzapur and Chandoli district. He asked officials to depute one nodal officer for each flood affected 
1,500 villages in these districts. Almost all major rivers are in spate and around 2,000 villages are affected from flood in state. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. In the run-up to Independence Day, we bring you stories on sectors which have made major impact on the lives of citizens. In this series today, we bring you a report on the defence sector. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has stressed that the private sector can play an instrumental role in research, innovation, design, manufacturing of indigenous defence products to make the country self-reliant in the defence sector. Speaking at a webinar on 22nd of February this year, Mr Modi had said, the government is promoting the indigenous manufacturing of defence technologies and equipment which will boost the MSME sector and start-ups. आजादी के बाद पहली बार डिफेंस सेक्टर में प्राइवेट सेक्टर का पार्टिसिपेशन बढ़ाने पर इतना जोर दिया जा रहा है प्राइवेट सेक्टर को आगे लाने के लिए उनके लिए काम करना और आसान बनाने के लिए सरकार उनके ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस पर बल दे रही है मैं डिफेंस सेक्टर में आ रहे प्राइवेट सेक्टर की एक चिंता भी समझता हूं अर्थव्यवस्था के अन्य सेक्टर्स के मुकाबले डिफेंस सेक्टर में सरकार का दखल कई गुना ज्यादा है क्योंकि यह सेक्टर नेशनल सिक्योरिटी से जुड़ा हुआ है लेकिन साथ ही प्राइवेट सेक्टर की साझेदारी के बिना 21वीं सदी का डिफेंस मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इकोसिस्टम खड़ा नहीं हो सकता Our correspondent reports India with the second largest armed forces and with the fifth largest defense budget in the world is on the path to achieve self-reliance in defense production. India's first indigenous aircraft carrier Vikrant which successfully accomplished its maiden sea voyage on the 8th of this month has added another golden feather to the country's defense capabilities. The government has approved a long pending proposal to restructure the Ordnance Factory Board that operates 41 ammunition and defense equipment production facilities. The government's thrust is an indigenization of defense production and equipment along with strengthening of the defense forces. FDI policy in defense sector has been liberalized. The draft defense procurement policy 2020 was a push forward for higher indigenous content. Government raised the foreign direct investment limit by automatic route in defense sector from the existing 49% to 74%. The much awaited Rafal's journey from France to India was one of the most defining moments in the annals of defense history. Induction of Rafale aircraft along with acquisition of state-of-art weaponry has added to the firepower. Sobhagya, Air News, Delhi. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address Investor Summit in Gujarat at 11 this morning. India achieves installed renewable energy capacity of 100 gigawatts. Government asks its offices to switch over to prepaid smart meters. Niti Aayog issues guidelines for state governments and local bodies to frame policies for setting up charging networks for electric vehicles. More than 52 crore 89 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far. India asks its nationals to leave Afghanistan by commercial flights. Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur launches nationwide Fit India Freedom Runs 2.0. India sends largest ever contingent for Tokyo Paralympic Games. And in cricket, KL Rahul's unbeaten century and Rohit Sharma's gutsy 83 help India take upper hand against England in second test in London. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alert. Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur launched the nationwide program of Fit India Freedom Runs 2.0 from Major Dhyan Chand National Stadium in New Delhi this morning. The program is being organized throughout the country as part of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav celebrations. Through this campaign, citizens will be given a call to make a resolve to include physical activity of at least 30 minutes daily in their lives. Fitness kiddos Aada Ghanta Rose. Speaking on the occasion, Mr. Thakur said, "Aye, aaj se hi shuruat karte hain, aur ek baar jab shuruat achhi hogi, ajadi ke amrit mahotsav par hogi, to ye jivan ka ek hissa banegi, aur hume fit rakhne par, aur Bharat ko hit banane par fit rakhne par bhi ek bahut bada yogdan degi. Aap sab jude, yuva karyakram vibhag ka, khel vibhag ka, main bahut abhar prakat karta hu, aur jo alag alag sansthaye, alag alag." लोग भी इंडिविजुअल और इंस्टीट्यूशंस दोनों जुड़े हैं मैं आप सबका बहुत-बहुत आभार प्रकट करता हूं 
आपको अमृत महोत्सव की भी बधाई फिट इंडिया फ्रीडम रन 2.0 की भी बधाई आप रोज भागिए लोगों को जोड़िए और इसको सोशल मीडिया पर जरूर डालिए ताकि आपको देखकर देश भी प्रेरणा ले सके आओ कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट रिपोर्ट्स दैट अलोंग विद दिल्ली Fit India Freedom Runs 2.0 the program will be organized in nine other iconic locations across the country the iconic locations include Chandrashekhar Azad Park Allahabad Uttar Pradesh the cellular jail Port Blair in Andaman and Nicobar Islands Gaza Post in Himachal Pradesh Gateway of India in Mumbai Chitralekha Udyan in Tezpur Assam Atari border and Chennai where Fit India Run events are being organized by CRPF CISF ITBP NSG SSB BSF Railways and Nehru Yuva Kendra Sangathan more from our correspondent The aim of the initiative is to encourage people to take up fitness activities such as running and sports in their daily lives and get freedom from obesity laziness stress and diseases The program will be organized in 744 districts and 30,000 educational institutions across the country Through this initiative more than 7 crore 50 lakh youth and citizens will take part in the run The programs will be held each week in 75 districts and at 75 villages in each district till 2nd October this year the key activities of fit india freedom run 2.0 include pledge rendering of national anthem freedom run cultural functions at venues awareness among youth volunteers to participate and also organize similar freedom runs in their villages with dipendra kumar suparna sekya ir news delhi is mitti se hi paida hue is mitti mein de denge ja Health Minister Mansukh Mandviya has launched the first phase of the awareness campaign for HIV, TB and blood donation on the occasion of International Youth Day. He virtually engaged with more than 1 lakh students from government schools and colleges as part of the nationwide celebration of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav to mark the 75th year of India's independence. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh will formally launch various major events virtually from New Delhi today to commemorate the 75th anniversary of India's independence being celebrated as Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav. The events include national flag unfurling at various places, product and facility launch, cleaning of statues, Jan Sampark Abhiyan for veterans and books on deeds of gallantry. The Border Roads Organisation will unfurl the national flag at 75 important passes and places in the country displaying their resolve in developing border infrastructure. 75 teams of BRO will depart today to these remote places. As part of celebrations under Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav, Fit India Freedom Run is being organized in Madhya Pradesh also. State Director of Nehru Yuva Kendra RN Tyagi informed that in Madhya Pradesh Fit India Freedom Run is being organized jointly by Nehru Yuva Kendra Sangathan NYK and National Service Scheme under the theme Jan Bhagidari se Jan Andolan more from our Bhopal correspondent Fit India Freedom Run is being organized in 75 identified places of all 52 districts of the state. Today Fit India Freedom Run will take place at Gwalior, Sagar, Ashoknagar, Shivpuri, Baitul and Burhanpur. While on August 14th this race will be organized in Agar Malwa, Ali Rajpur and Anuppur. The run will be organized in other districts of the state as well till October 2nd. The event will also witness participation of youth icons, sports persons, public representatives, panchayati raj representatives and eminent personalities. of the state puja pivardhan air news bhopal in chatisgarh various programs are being organized under the azadi ka amrit mahotsav from today fit india freedom run is being organized by the union ministry of sports and youth affairs and nehru yuva kendra sangathan in various districts of the state move from our raipur correspondent 
फिट इंडिया फ्रीडम रन इज ऑल सेट टू बिगिन फ्रॉम सरगुजा एंड गोरेला पेंड्रा मरवाही डिस्ट्रिक्ट टूडे इन अंबिकापुर द डिस्ट्रिक्ट हेडक्वार्टर्स ऑफ सरगुजा द रन विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द कलेक्टोरेट प्रेमाइस एट टेन ए एम वॉलेंटियर्स ऑफ नेहरू युवा केंद्र संगठन एंड नेशनल सर्विस स्कीम एन एस एस विल पार्टिसिपेट इन द फ्रीडम रन द फिट इंडिया फ्रीडम रन विल बी ऑर्गेनाइज ऑन डिफरेंट डेट्स इन ऑल द ट्वेंटी एट डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ द स्टेट ड्यूरिंग दिस कल्चरल एंड अदर प्रोग्राम्स विल ऑल्सो बी ऑर्गेनाइज टू मेक पीपल अवेयर ऑफ द फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल एंड अचीवमेंट्स ऑफ इंडिया विकल्प शुक्ला ए आई आर न्यूज रायपुर A year-long Amrit Mahotsav quiz is being organized by the News Services Division of All India Radio as a part of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav celebrations. Titled Amrit Mahotsav Quiz with AIR News, the quiz starts from Monday, 16th August 2021 on 100.1 AIR FM Gold Channel. The aim of the quiz is to raise public awareness about India's freedom movement, its glorious history, art and culture, heritage and strides in various walks of life over the past 75 years. Every Monday and Tuesday, one question each in Hindi and English will be asked at the start of the morning news at 8 a.m. in Hindi and 8.30 a.m. in English. The same question will be repeated towards the end of 8 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. news bulletins. Citizens can send their responses to the question over email on amritmahotsavquiz at gmail.com. From the correct responses, one lucky participant will be declared the winner of that edition of the quiz. The name of the winner will be announced in the morning bulletins at 8 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. the very next day and flashed on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. The winner will be awarded an e-certificate and a token prize. So join us to celebrate 75 years of India's independence on Amrit Mahotsav Quiz with AIR News. India is closely monitoring the developments in Afghanistan and has expressed concern over the deteriorating security situation. Briefing media in New Delhi, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bhakchi said, the Indian mission in Kabul issued an advisory for Indian nationals to return via commercial flights. He also added that there is no formal evacuation mechanism. Our mission in Kabul issued an advisory for Indian nationals earlier this week, advising them to return to India via commercial flights. Last year, our mission in Kabul had facilitated the return of more than 383 members of the Hindu and Sikh community in Afghanistan to India. And our embassy, our mission in Kabul, continues to remain in touch with the Afghan Hindu and Sikh community members, and we will ensure the provision of all necessary assistance to them. Indian consulate in Mazar-e Sharif had withdrawn all India-based personnel earlier this week as a temporary measure. Mr. Bhakti said Indian consulate there continues to be operational with locally recruited staff. A 54-member largest ever Indian contingent was given a formal and virtual send-off to Tokyo Paralympic Games by Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Thakur yesterday. The athletes were addressed and sent best wishes by Mr. Thakur via a video message. Minister of Tourism, G.K. Reddy, and MOS External Affairs and Culture, Minakshi Lekhi, also addressed the athletes. Mr. Thakur said India is sending its largest ever contingent to the Paralympic Games in Tokyo, 54 para-sportspersons across nine sports disciplines. He said the passing of para-athletes shows their passion, rather, of para-athletes shows their phenomenal human spirit. He asked them to remember that when they play for India, 130 crore Indians will cheer for them. पिछली बार से तीन गुना ज्यादा हमारे पैरा ओलंपिक्स में भारत के एथलीट्स पार्टिसिपेट करने जा रहे हैं और मुझे पूर्ण विश्वास आपका प्रदर्शन भी पहले से बहुत उत्तम रहेगा। देशवासियों को आपसे बहुत उम्मीदें हैं। आपने पहले भी तिरंगे का मान सम्मान बढ़ाया है अब की बार भी आप तिरंगे का मान सम्मान पहले से ज्यादा बढ़ाएंगे In cricket, KL Rahul's unbeaten ton and Rohit Sharma's gutsy 83 knock helped India take the upper hand against England on the opening day of the second test at Lords in London. At stumps, India were 276 for 3 with Rahul 127 and Ajankya Rahane won at the crease yesterday. Earlier, Joe Root led England, won the toss and opted to bowl. For England, James Anderson took two wickets for 52 runs, while Oli Robinson took one wicket. And now let us look at today's weather. 
The national capital Delhi will have a partly cloudy sky. It recorded 27 degrees Celsius as the minimum temperature, while the maximum will be around 36 degrees. Mumbai is predicted to have generally cloudy sky, moderate light rain. Minimum and maximum temperatures will hover between 24 and 32 degrees Celsius. Chennai is likely to witness generally cloudy sky with light rain. Temperature will vary between 26 and 36 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature in the city was 28 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 34 degrees. Hyderabad is expected to have a generally cloudy sky with possibility of development of thunder or lightning. The minimum temperature was 24 degrees and the maximum may go up to 34 degrees Celsius. Bengaluru is expected to witness a generally cloudy sky with light rain. The temperature will hover between 21 and 28 degrees Celsius. Srinagar may witness a mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards evening. The minimum temperature was 20 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be nearly 31 degrees. Jammu is forecast to have a partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm. The maximum temperature will be around 35 degrees Celsius while it recorded 26 degrees Celsius as the minimum. Leh may have a partly cloudy sky. Minimum temperature was 12 degrees Celsius while maximum will be around 28 degrees Celsius. Gilgit is likely to have a partly cloudy sky. The maximum temperature may rise up to 38 degrees Celsius. It noted a lower limit of 19 degrees. Muzaffarabad is forecast to witness a partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm. Temperature will hover between 24 and 36 degrees Celsius. Guwahati may have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature was around 27 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 36 degrees. Imphal is likely to have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. The minimum temperature was recorded at 22 and the maximum will be around 30 degrees. Shillong may have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The temperature will move from minimum of 18 to a maximum of 26 degrees Celsius. Eswal is also predicted to have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. And now an overview of today's newspapers. Active cases go up after five days. 41,000 infections, 490 die in 24 hours. The Asian Age reports on the latest situation on COVID-19 in India. One dose Sputnik light set for rollout in September, reports the Times of India. COVID risk may shift to younger children, say researchers from the U.S., writes the Pioneer. Retail inflation cools to 5.59% in July, reports the Business Standard. Economy not ready yet for RBI to drain out liquidity, headlines the Hindu business line, quoting the Finance Minister. The Economic Times quotes the Minister as saying, growth remains priority for both government and RBI. Landslide toll 14 over 20 missing, hope fades, reports the Tribune, referring to the landslide in Kinnor. And finally, Chandrayaan 2 finds water on moon's surface, reports the Pioneer. Probe spots hydroxyl also with much precise location, informs the paper. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address Investor Summit in Gujarat at 11 this morning. India achieves installed renewable energy capacity of 100 gigawatts. Government asks its offices to switch over to prepaid smart meters. Niti Aayog issues guidelines for state governments and local bodies to frame policies for setting up charging networks for electric vehicles. More than 52 crore 89 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far. India asks its nationals to leave Afghanistan by commercial flight. Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur launches nationwide Fit India Freedom Runs 2.0. India sends largest ever contingent of Tokyo Paralympic Games. And in cricket, KL Rahul's unbeaten century and Rohit Sharma's gutsy 83 help India take up a hand against England in second test in London. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in and News on AIR app. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.